Okay, so now what we're gonna do is make it so we can see this landscape a whole lot better. We're gonna change some color and contrast so this better fits what we're trying to achieve. And what I mean by that, um, you know, we do, I do see some sort of a landscape forming here, but what we're gonna do in this video, we're going to make it so that vision is more clear. Okay, I know it can be pretty difficult to envision something, it can be hard, but um, hopefully this will help you understand this a lot better. So, I mean, this really, we have these adjustments over here, but we're not gonna be using these because if you see, I'll just demonstrate right here. Um, if we just add brightness, if we click on this, it adds a layer, um, but we're not gonna be using that. So I'm just gonna delete that. Um, we will be using that in the final video. Now, the reason we're not going to be using the layers is because it, it kind of gets all weird and funky, like uh, it's just weird. So just trust me on this. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to apply these adjustments directly to the landscape. So if you made uh, some black bars like I did, make sure, first of all, make sure it's locked. You don't want to be going over that because that can be very, very annoying. So make sure I just called it main. This is our main area, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Just click on that, your main image. And what we're going to do, we're going to go up to image adjustments. And as you can see, we have a whole ton of options. And we're really just going to be focusing on right from color lookup to brightness and contrast. Don't worry about these things. Um, so really just these, and all of these are right here. These are all these icons. This is the brightness contrast right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead, click this, and we'll get this menu like this. Now drag it somewhere so you can see your image and still adjust accordingly. And this, uh, this is going to come down to you how much you want to do it. It really depends on what you have and you have to make your best judgment on what you do. So um, a lot of it comes down to experimentation, but if I just bring up the brightness just a little bit right here, um, you can see immediately, if you have preview on, immediately things start to happen. Now I really love to add contrast. So um, if I just bring this up to a hundred, you can see like it's maximum potential. Uh, if I like to work down from there and so that looks good like that. And the way to check what you just did, you can just enable and disable the preview button. And as you can see, whoa, okay, wow. That, that, yeah, that looks so much better. You see, it's so faded now. You can really clearly see that now. And if I just put on the preview, wow, it just, it just pops out so much more. And I keep trying to look at my navigator right here so I can see it from far away, get the whole picture. You know, maybe we're starting to form some things here. We, we have some things, some weird kind of uh, spiky things here. And then it fades here to more spiky things, that kind of repetitive aspect to it. Maybe some mountains here, some things. So, so I'm starting to see this a little bit more. So let's add some more adjustments. So I'm gonna go up to image, adjustment, and we'll just work down from here. Not, you don't have to use every single one of these, although I do recommend experimenting with it, have fun with it. You don't have to use all of them though, but so what I like to do, I like to use levels. I just clicked on levels and if we go down to output levels and we move this up to about two. I mean, you can see nothing really happened but I can show you what this is doing. Um, so if I bring this up, you'll see that the whole image gets really dark. And this is our darkest dark, okay? So if I bring this up, you can see now our darkest dark is this. And you can see them, you're, I'm comparing this to our black bars. And remember, this is on a separate layer. So we can see that difference. And the reason I'm doing this is because I think um, complete black can be really harsh against the eyes. So I just like to bring this up just a little bit. So our darkest dark will be 
this dark. Um, and I know that can be hard to see right now, but let me just bring that down because obviously that's not going to work. Now, I wouldn't touch this because that's going to lower our whites, lightest part of the image. And that just that you really want really bright parts, really good highlights. And we can make that more contrasty. We can bring up those lights. If we bring this bar down, uh, I know this this whole thing levels can be a little confusing. Um, but just just uh, move the sliders around, see what it does, and you can make some analysis from there, conclusions and things like that. So, um, so let's see, let's check the preview. Okay, so now we have uh, a much brighter image. If I check the navigator, yeah, I definitely like it brighter. So I'm gonna press OK, and we're just gonna keep repeating from there. So we're gonna go up to image again, adjustments. And um, curves and exposure, I mean, these these are grouped together because they're all really sort of the same thing. Do They're a little different from each other, of course, but let's go into more color. So this is like a, a color, colors grouped together. And I'm just going to click on Vibrance, and we can definitely use some saturation. Or if you want, you can desaturate it. That will make it black and white. But... Um, Think of vibrance as a fine tuner to your color, and saturation is like a coarse tuner. That's really going to saturate it. Um, that's how I like to distinguish vibrance versus saturation. They're, they're really sort of the same thing. Um, but just bring that up a little bit. It doesn't have to, I don't have to be too crazy about that, but that just gives it a little bit of a touch like that. And we're already getting somewhere very awesome so i'm just gonna look at adjustments again i mean that's really the basics as long as you've got brightness contrast you know um you change your brightness and that sort of thing you really start to get the image a lot better one fun thing you can do is hue and saturation this one is a really fun one because um you can change the hue of your entire all you can change your whole color palette if you want to now i don't think i'm going to change this because i really like the colors it's it's very rare that i do completely change the hue but that's when it's like super super abstract i mean this is pretty abstract but it's still traditional in a sense that we have a sky we're starting to get a foreground here maybe there's some plants here but I'm starting to see things, and that is what we're trying to do here. So one last thing um, we can do is if we go up to filter. We can go to filter gallery dot 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 and press that, and we can zoom out here by clicking this minus button in the corner if it's too big. And what we have here is our filter gallery, and in here we have a whole ton of filters to play around with and this is a really awesome cool area i mean plastic wrap that's pretty cool very um not useful for <laughs> what we're doing here but i mean you can do a lot of things like fresco that's pretty cool and what you can do with fresco you can take this and um start using these sliders and adjusting it so Fresco is pretty cool, but another one you can use is that I, I really like to use is poster edges. Um, this one's pretty cool. I mean, it really doesn't matter which one you choose. I mean, it really depends on what you want to do. So what we can do, we can change up what's happening here. And, you know, you really don't have to know what these mean, because when you start making um changes with the sliders they will change in real time so one thing posterization you can see what's happening here let me just zoom up just a little bit um if you look focus right here and if i just bring the posterization down it's pretty much what's doing all right you can see a lot as i bring it down to zero um pretty much it's separating all these colors into sort of like a topographic kind of feel, um, you know, they're in these uh, kind of layering kind of uh, things here, like wave kind of effects. Um, and really, I think posterization, posterization is uh, 
pretty cool because now we're adding more detail. So if I bring this up, you can see it kind of gets a little muddy there. If I bring it down, I'm separating everything and I'm getting more detail all of a sudden. So I'm going to zoom out and um, you can see like this is defining our edges. So edge intensity. Now I'm starting to see these edges a lot more clear. Like if you were to outline certain things in any old drawing. And I don't want this too intense because I don't want it to be too kind of... I don't, I don't really want it, my final result to have these uh, thick edges here. So I'm going to keep it on the light side. And you can just, this is really just all about experimenting. And that's really what you have to keep in mind when you're doing this is just experiment, experiment, experiment. And you'll find that you're getting really cool things all of a sudden, like really cool things. So this is really, this is really interesting. I really like what's going on here. We're starting to define these edges. I mean, you look here, we're separating the foregrounds. We kind of have this outline path all of a sudden. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press okay. But I do wanna point out the reason this does look weird um, is because this is, we're only focusing on this layer. And normally when, right when I press okay, you'll see that this layer kind of covers it up, the black bars layer. And I just hide that, you can see that, all that weird stuff, but that's because we were only working on this layer. So now we are really having, we have something pretty cool here. Now, keep in mind, you, I, you do want to keep flipping to see what's going on and like, like, wow, now we have a different image, but this is going to come so I'm going to be using this a whole ton more in the next video. When we really start going into this, we're going to go into this, we're going to grab our paintbrush tool, we're going to start really carving out like these kind of structures I see here. But hopefully, um, we're starting to see something here. And I really am starting to see something here, we have like a path going on here. And we can see what we did if we go to history, and this can be a little confusing to understand, but if we go up here, we can see right when I open this, this is what it looked like at the start of this video. And I mean, that's pretty, that is very significant. So if I go back here, or if I just hit control Z, you can see like that is a huge difference, huge, just massive. It just pops up so much more. And I really, that should really, really help you start to see something here. Okay, we got really good detail. We got a sky, we got a foreground going. We're really starting to get somewhere. Okay, so I'm gonna end it here before it gets too long. And in the next video, we're gonna be using our paintbrush tool, like I said, and we're really gonna start defining what we see here based on light and based on value, color, that sort of thing, based on the grounds, and I'll be describing it all in the next video.